The first thing we're presented with in our new RIV file are the options to create a new artboard. We can select its size from a list of different devices. However, I'm just going to stick with the default 500 pixels by 500 pixels. Here is our new artboard. If you're using a trackpad, you can zoom in and out by pinching, or you can adjust the zoom by going up here and typing in a number. You can also use the shortcuts plus and minus to zoom in or out. To move the artboard, simply drag two fingers on your trackpad. Or if you don't have a trackpad, just hold down space and then click and drag. If you move your artboard too far and need to find it again, just tap F. This shortcut finds your artboard. Over on the left, we have our hierarchy panel. At the moment, we only have our artboard, but if we had any layers on our artboard, we would see them listed down here. Next is our assets panel. This is where you can import external files like images, Lottie files, fonts, and audio. And finally, we have the data panel. We'll be using this in the near future to control our state machine. Let's go back to the hierarchy panel for now, and let's go through some of this artboard's properties. If you highlight your artboard, you can see its properties over on the right. We can change its position, its size, and we can change its background color. I'm going to set mine to black. Up here in the top panel, we have some tools. The first section is mainly concerned with transforming our layers. We also have freeze down here, and I'll show you what this does in a few minutes. The second section is mainly concerned with artboards, our layouts feature, and different kinds of groups. The third section is concerned with design. Here is the pen tool. This enables us to create custom paths for our designs, and we also have some procedural shapes as well. Up here is our text tool, shortcut T. This allows you to create dynamically changing text. Over here we have our bones. This lets us rig our designs for animation. Next we have events. These are useful for triggering state machine changes and also sending messages and values out of Rive to be received by your runtime code. Down here we have joysticks, which is another useful rigging tool. And here we have property groups. This is a very useful part of our data binding feature, which we'll get to in a few tutorials time. Finally, we have the play button. If we press this, we press play on our state machine. Now, we aren't quite there yet, but we'll be there soon. So I'm just going to press pause. Over here, we have the user logos. Right now, it's my logo because I'm using this file. However, Rive files can actually be shared and edited by several people at the same time. So if you're working with a team on the same file, you're going to see their logos here as well. You're also going to see their cursors moving around the file, so you can keep track of what everyone is working on. Up here we have the export button. This gives you three options. Number one, export for runtime. This creates a .riv file. This is a stripped back version of your Rive file that can be given to a developer to implement your project at runtime. If you don't want to give your file to a developer and want to share it with a designer, simply go over here, go down to export, and instead of exporting a .riv, export a .rev. This is a full backup of your Rive file that you can share with a designer who can then open it in the Rive editor. Let's go back to our export options, and the second option is generate share link. This allows people to interact with your Rive file in the browser, and the last option is Publish to Marketplace. This lets us share our files with the Rive community and potentially get featured in the editor. Now we know where basically everything is, so let's create our first shape layer. I'm going to go up here and create a circle. Click and drag and hold down Shift to link the size of both sides. I can move the circle around and you'll notice that it is snapping. Like that, like that, like that. Snapping is quite helpful in design. However, if you want to turn it off, you can either move it around and hold down Command to turn off snapping whilst you're moving it, or you can just go up here 
and turned snapping off, like that. No more snapping. If you want to centre your layer in the artboard, go up here to centre it horizontally, and over here to centre it vertically. Over here you can see our ellipse in our hierarchy, and with it highlighted we can go over here and see some of its properties. Much like the artboard we can change its position, and colour. However, we also have a few more options, like scale on both the X and Y axes. We can also link the two scale properties so that they both scale equally. We also have rotation, but because we're rotating this circle from the centre, we can't really see much of anything. So how do we rotate it from a different location? Well, we simply change its origin. Tap Y to enter freeze mode, and we can now change the position of this gizmo, thus changing the location of its origin. Tap Y to exit freeze mode, and now when we rotate the layer, it rotates from a different origin. This is now the point at which all other properties affect our layer as well. Now that we've gone through a few settings, up here you'll notice that we have Design and Animate. What does this mean? Well, as you know, Rive is a design tool. But Rive is also an animation program. So, to keep the two processes from interfering with each other, Rive has two distinct modes. But what's the difference? Well, right now we're in Design mode. This means that when I change a layer's property, like the X and Y position of this circle, this change has not created a keyframe. In fact, in design mode, there are no keyframes at all. However, if I were to switch to animate mode, and then open up a timeline, you can now see little diamonds next to each property of our shape layer. These allow us to set keyframes for any property that we want. For instance, at the beginning of the timeline, I can move the circle's position up here. You can now see over here in its position properties that the diamonds have turned blue. This means that we've set a keyframe for the X position and another keyframe for the Y position. I can go down to my timeline and open up this layer and see the keyframes reflected here on the timeline as well. I can then move this blue line to the end of my timeline and I can move my circle to a different location. And by moving this circle, I've now set two more keyframes for its position property at the end of the timeline. So we have keyframe set at the beginning, we have keyframe set at the end, and when I press play, the layer is animating from one position to another. What we're doing in reality is interpolating between this set of keyframe values and this set of keyframe values across time. This is the basic concept of animation. However, the novel thing about Rive is we can have multiple animations and transition between them using Rive's state machine. This lets you create basically any interactive experience that you want.